Hey YouTube, welcome to TC10, the crazy troll nation of YouTube. This video is about you and letting people know who you are and what you're about and representing yourself as accurately as possible. So the question is, and sometimes people ask me this question or sometimes me just ear hustling, listen to people. I'm just like, what? The question is, when do you let someone know that you're in the into BDSM or the MS community or the leather community, or even if you're polyamorous, when do you let someone know that? For me, and I do recognize it's a luxury, I retired in 2014. I don't have to worry about running into a coworker. And then if I ran into them somewhere, they're where I am. So that that's not even a concern either. But I do realize it's a luxury to not have to worry about if my boss finds out or if my coworkers find out or if they come across, you know, my social medias or anything like that. And, you know, I'm on YouTube. You see my face. I'm on Twitter. I have my face on there. Facebook, my face is on there. <laughs> on FetLife, my face is on there. Um, and <laughs> I know it's a luxury to not be concerned with Oh, well, family members find out. And I have a website. My face is on there. And there's articles about BDSM, polyamory, mental health awareness, relationships, um, you know, all sorts of things. The same as my YouTube channel. It's just a box of chocolates. You click on there. You know, don't know what you're going to get that day until you go to the playlist or search by category. Anyway, it is a luxury to not have to be concerned with any of that. I do realize that. However, I've also feel like it's important when dating or looking for someone to be in an MS or DS or kinky type relationship for them to know immediately like what type of person you are what you are into because it may be a deal breaker for some people on my FET profile which is a website for kinky BDSM leather MS people so you kind of know they're into something that's not vanilla vanilla is anything that's within the norm, the society, societal norm, religious norms, patriarchal stuff. Um, vanilla is that old school, this is what you do. The man goes to work, comes home, has missionary sex with the wife, and then she fixes dinner and takes care of the kids. That's vanilla in a nutshell. And I know there's more to it than that, I'm just saying. <laughs> Not vanilla is anything else. So... If you're on Fet Life, you already know that everybody on there is into something, most likely. Or at least, or they may say they're vanilla, but they like to watch other people do stuff. So that's that's still not the vanilla norm. So for me, and again, I know it's a luxury. When I was online dating, at the end of at the end of 2020, I I deleted all of my um <laughs> online dating accounts. I think I had two. And I had already previously deleted the Facebook dating one. I had already previously um, deleted OkCupid. So I think I just had like plenty of fish left. And it was like one other one that I don't even remember right now. But I would have one there, you know, I'm polyamorous, not to be confused with polysexual. <laughs> I'm active in the BDSM community and I'm a part of the leather and MS communities. And so I put it out there up front so people know before they message me about my lifestyle. Because I don't want to blindside anybody. You meet someone, you get along, and you like them. And then you tell them, oh, yeah, I like to do this. And they're just like, oh, my gosh, how could you do that? And then they don't want to have anything to do with you. So if someone is not a good fit, if someone is not compatible, wouldn't you rather them know that up front? I came across people who, in the polyamory community, that would say, and usually it was men. And I'm just like, that's just cringy. That's, ooh. They would say, oh, well, if I meet a, meet a girl, and I'm like, you're 45, why are you meeting girls? And I know they say that to me, women, but it's just a pet peeve of mine. Like, they're not girls. They're adult women. Anyway, that's a whole nother video. Anyway, they would say, oh, well, if I meet a girl, and, and you know, we go out a couple times, and, you know, I, I think she's really liking me, and I'm really liking her. I don't tell her until, like, the third or fourth date that I'm polyamorous. And I'm like, why would you not tell her on the first date? Well, because, you know, I want her to really like me and I don't want to turn her off. And even if I tell her on the fourth date that I'm polyamorous, if she really likes me, she'll still date me even if she doesn't agree with me being polyamorous. I'm like, that's some manipulative bullshit. <laughs> 
So really, you're just trying to get laid. You want her to like you enough to stay with you, even though your lifestyle is one that she doesn't agree with because you want to get laid. You want her to like you enough to have sex with you and then just bypass this part of your life that she doesn't agree with. And these were men like in their 40s that were saying things like this. And I'm just like... <sighs> so needless to say, I highly disagree with that method of meeting people. Let people know who you are up front as much as you're comfortable with. Anything I think may be a deal breaker for someone, I put it in my profile. I put that I'm a disabled veteran. Some people don't want to deal with someone with disabilities. I put in there, now this is a weird one, that it's a deal breaker for some people. I put on my profiles that I have a doctorate degree in psychology and I'll have men message me saying I want to meet you but I'm intimidated because I feel like I might feel like, you know, I'm in kindergarten having a conversation with you. You guys that watch my videos, you see how I talk. Like, <laughs> why would you feel like you're in kindergarten? <laughs> but I have people tell me that. They're like, oh, your education and your degrees is intimidating. I'm like, I'm still a person. I have met people who disengaged with me because they don't like that I ask a lot of questions and they're like oh you're just being you know clinical and you're overthinking and I'm like no I'm just asking you questions because I want to understand you and I don't understand why that's so difficult for some people to get how do you get to know someone without asking them questions about themselves or if they say something asking them oh well why do you prefer this one over that one because that gives you insight into how they think and what they like and why and people are just like, oh, you're just overanalyzing. No, I'm trying to get to know you. So it can be a catch-22 when you put your information out there. But then it's a good thing because if, if something about me is going to turn them off or make them feel inadequate, I'd rather them just not contact me anyway. And if they're feeling inadequate about something, am I making them feel that way because I have college degrees? Like that's something on their end in their mind that they're going through, which has nothing at all to do with me. And so that's another thing too, is don't take it personal when people say, oh, well, you're this or you're that. They don't even know you to know if you're this or you're that. Unless it's like, oh, you're a disabled veteran. Yes, I am. But that doesn't tell you about my character. That doesn't tell you about my personality. That doesn't tell you what I like and what I don't like about just different things in life in general. And so pay attention to the types of messages that you receive. Or if you're meeting someone in person and you happen to mention, um, like sometimes when I'm out, I'll say, you know, to the wait person or the cashier, do you, do you guys do military discounts? And the person I'm with would be like, oh, you're in the, you're in the military. Like if it, this is someone I did not meet online, so they didn't, you know, have all that stuff to read about me. Excuse me, I keep hiccuping. <laughs> and they'll be like, oh, you're in the military. I'm like, yes, I was in the army and I'm a disabled veteran. And usually they ask me about my disability because I look like I'm fully functional, even though I'm not. <laughs> and you guys know I'm a little loopy too. So. <laughs> and so and then we'll talk about it. I prefer that than to just, be like, oh, yeah, I was in the army, and that's it. Like, if I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. Oh, yes, I was in the army, and I'm a dis disabled veteran. And, and it's open for discussion. And if you share something with someone, like if you meet them, like, out in the community or at the grocery store or gas station or whatever, I feel like whatever I say is open for discussion. And it may be an unrealistic expectation, but I feel like whatever they say is open for discussion as well. So if they say something like, oh, yeah, you know, my second, you know, ex-wife, blah, 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 I might say, well, how many times were you married? And if they get defensive or get an attitude, I'm like, well, dude, you brought up the subject. <laughs> and that helps me get insight also into the type of person they are. Like, why are you getting defensive? Because I'm asking how many times you were married. Like, you said your second ex-wife. Like, how many did you have? And it's not an issue for me. I'm just asking a question. I'm just curious. I just want to know. I've been divorced twice. I don't have an issue saying that. <laughs> I really don't. And I think it goes into um, emotional maturity when people are, are 
genuinely okay with explaining their thought process, explaining different things that have happened in their life, when they're okay with answering your questions about something personal that they brought up in the first place. And so those are the kinds of people that you want to speak to. I have this piece of hair right here that's just not <laughs> wanting to slow down. And so just be aware of how people speak to you, the things that they say to you. Are they willing to have conversations? Do they bring up something and then they get defensive when you ask them about something that they just said? And also pay attention to how they respond and react to what you say. Um, you know, do they take an interest in what you say? If, if you happen to mention, oh, I just bought a new pair of hiking boots, you know, last week. And you have another half hour conversation. They mention nothing about hiking or camping. So it's just like, okay, I guess they don't care about that part of my life. <laughs> and that's not anything major. But if something like that happens over and over and over and over, are they taking an interest in the things that interest you? At least as far as conversation. You don't have to go hiking with me, but at least understand this is something that I like to do. And I mentioned it because it's a part of my life and it's something that I do. So anyway, I hope this makes sense. And... The gist of this is as much as you are able to present yourself as accurately as possible when you initially meet people so that they can make an informed as possible decision into whether or not to continue engaging with you. Don't wait until the third or fourth date to say something that you know may be a deal breaker for some people. You know what I mean? And so... Yeah, just be your authentic self and become comfortable being your authentic self. Do not want the desire to have a person in your life overshadow you being who you really are. Because if you pretend to be somebody or something you're not, eventually your real self is going to come through a month, six months, a year, two years. You don't want a relationship to end because you weren't honest with who you are. And so it's not always even about being honest with the other person. It's being honest with yourself about who you are. If you think you're one way and you're not, then you are presenting who you think you are. And that's a whole nother thing. That's, that's a mental health topic. Because some people do perceive themselves to be one way and everybody in their life perceives them to be something totally different. That's another conversation. <laughs> Is that another conversation so anyway that is it for this video and let me know your thoughts below or message me or find me on social media let me know what you think so thanks for watching